Hello, and welcome to episode four of Talking Point from the Wind Technology Studio here in the Eau Claire Chamber office, and want to thank our media sponsor, Royal Credit Union. I am Chelsea Sakura, the creative director for the Eau Claire Chamber. In today's episode, we'll be focusing on a conversation that is happening throughout the Chippewa Valley. And so to start us off, we have Chamber President and CEO, Dave Miner. Thank you, Chelsea. And again, as you all know, when we launched this podcast, it's about sharing the facts, sharing the true story that's out there. So all of you, our listeners, can really base your opinion off of that and not necessarily what's coming from the coffee shop or the grocery store. Great places, but we want you to get your facts here. So today, I'm very excited to introduce our two guests. Um, so after the news of last week when uh, HSHS and Prevea said that they were going to be closing at the end of April, we immediately, the chamber, took action to put a task force together to deal with all of the various aspects that we felt were critical that we could address through a task force and did so. So as we did that, obviously the first step is to reach into our community and look about who could be co-chairs, who can help steer this vessel as we go forward. And, and we felt that as we looked out there to get two individuals that, one, were diverse, but came from maybe a little bit of a different background. So first of all, we have Dr. Bill Rupp, who is a retired Mayo CEO from Eau Claire. Uh, he also spent some time in Mankato and as well down in Florida. And then the other one we asked was Jerry Jacobson. Of course, everybody knows Jerry from President of Northwestern Bank, well-rooted in our community and our region. We just felt that they both could bring different perspective, but also had the respect and the knowledge to help lead this group. So gentlemen, first, thank you both very much because I, I know that was not an easy yes because a lot of what we're dealing with as of today still is unknown. You know, we've kind of chartered a course. But help us or help our listeners understand how you see the task force being effective and dealing with those things that really belong there. But there are some outside pieces to that as well. So I'll let you each introduce yourself and right. go from there. This is Bill Rupp. I think from our point of view, the biggest con anxious concern here is that we've got to assume that this is going to happen and that there's a tremendous number of people involved, employees, patients, people who supply Sacred Heart, people who are insured. We've got to start figuring out how to help those people. And conversely, or also figure out how to help the community because there's going right. to be some tremendous impacts here as well. Correct. So our focus as we begin to draw up these committees and, and figure out the direction is focus on the people and the committees and we'll go from there. Okay. Jerry? This is Jerry Jacobson. Um, I think my always my goal is that we need to be optimistic. Um, there is a lot of challenges that are going to be occurring. Um, there is one right now, and I know there's a lot of anxiety out there. Um, I just I see that, and I've been contacted by um, people wondering um, where their health is. Uh, um, one person lives in a um, a place that uh, the hospital sisters own, and wondering if they're going to be evicted. All that type of stuff. Uh, um, I just encourage people to. Um, I know, and it's very difficult if it's affecting you. Is to um, take a breath um, and um, know that there is a group of people, very skilled people of all works of life in the Chippewa Valley, that are coming together to come up with solutions. And we will come up with solutions. Uh, to, it, it might take some time. None of this is going to be done overnight, uh, but there will be solutions from the committees. Yeah, Jerry, I, I agree with you. We've been through crises before, referencing Uniroyal, and we've gotten through them. We will get through this. It'll take maybe a couple of years, but we're going to get through it. Right. And, and again, one of the things we will make sure we do with our partners, not only through this podcast, but in the media as well, is one of the things we talked about is when we have those successes to share them as we go. Because as you both mentioned, as, as I started building this task force, there are multiple layers. So it's not just 
a business shutting down, and we need to find new jobs for those people. It's, it's, it's people. Bill, you mentioned it's, it's the patients who are looking for their answers today. It's the employees. It, it's the businesses and their employees, and it keeps just going on. So, you know, again, we, we do promise we'll share those things as, as we have wins, as we have, whether it be small or big, we want everybody to do it. But I, I do want to elaborate to make clear the point that this is going to, overall, it's going to take a while. You know, we just can't snap our fingers and be done. Yeah, and I'd, I'd encourage people to keep talking to us. There's going to be a tremendous number of stories and rumors out there. Yes. Um, probably more than we'll ever count. Mm-hmm. So just ask for the real real story, and we'll do our best to give it for you. Right. The chambers, all three of them, have a web pages on it, and uh, there will be information on all three of the chambers' web pages and places to give questions on it. So hopefully we can get the answers um, for those questions that uh, um, arise. And, and we don't know what all the questions are yet. Uh, um, you know, I think some of us, um, even though Bill and I have been around a long time and uh, both of us involved into the medical area, there's things that um, we're surprised by that we see on it of the challenges to uh, the people in the community. So um, let us know. Let us know what uh, these challenges are because I'm sure we don't know all of them. And, and to Jerry's point, that's a great lead-in. Um, we've just updated the, the, the main portal for this. So, again, you can go to the Eau Claire Chamber website, Chippewa Falls, Menominee. Again, we are collaborating on this issue because, to remind people, it's HSHS and Prevea. So all of the rural clinics, all of them are going to be shut. This is much greater than just our two communities. So we have collaborated. We are collaborating. So if you go to any of the three chambers' main websites, you'll see a button. HSHS Prevent Task Force, click on that, and you will see new links already today. There's going to be one in there. If you want to receive our newsletter, e-newsletter to stay up to date, you can do that. If you want to join the task force, each one, each committee has been explained. You can sign up for it. And if you have, as Jerry said, questions, please give us those. So far, we're over 150 questions. As we get answers, we'll post them. But again, you can imagine first getting the question, trying to figure out who's the right person, and then ask it. Now, it's not going to be quickly, but we will get to an answer at some level. So it, we had our first task force meeting, which is, you know, we had probably 40-some-plus people in the room, another 40 uh, up on the screen. Give me your your feeling of how that one went and, and, and maybe some of the takeaways that we already have seen. Well, I think one takeaway is that there's a tremendous number of people who feel very passionately about this process. There's also a, a lot of misinformation about healthcare, care, how health care works. And so dealing with everybody's feelings is going to be a good challenge. We have to. Correct. Everybody feels very strongly. And we'll be as open as we can as we go forward and as transparent as we can. Um, but understand that many people around you have very strong feelings. They may agree with you. They may disagree with you. Right. Uh, we're going to have a lot of conversations. Yes. Yeah. But I think overall, I was very impressed by the amount of caring that everybody had. It was well represented from health care groups to public groups to uh, to congressional people. And, yes. And I think this is I think we've got people who we need to have there and things will work out over time. Yeah. And and I would say one of the things that I was really very happy with when you talk about who is representing is to see the level of our elected officials, mm -hmm. both here but out of Madison and DC. That not just every office was represented and many of them by the elected themselves, but multiple staff people. Yes. Because again, at some level we know that we need their involvement to do this be successful. And so to see them all at the table from the beginning, to me, was very heartwarming. I think it was also um, very interesting to see the angst amongst especially the local officials on it, uh, whether it was city or county. Um, they have some real challenges, which we realize in our task force has to come up with. Uh, um, and I think we're experiencing the challenges already starting uh, regarding it. Uh, I noticed that uh, um, just a simple thing like um, um, someone gets picked up for um, um, drunk driving. Um, you don't have a hospital to right. uh, um, get the test. And yep. if you don't take the test nowadays, 
um, you're going to lose the case, for example. Right. Um, yep. Simple things like that, and uh, which you don't really think about no. when you're losing a hospital. No. So uh, uh, there's a lot more avenues than just um, a hospital beds of the 150 hospital beds. Correct. And, and that's where, again, I would remind people is this has so many layers that, again, you know, probably I would say between the three of us, Bill maybe has the best idea, but really for all people, the multiple layers of you start with A and all of a sudden you're going 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.0, point, all the way down. And so again, I, I, I would I would echo and ask people, yes, it, there's going to be passion here and, 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 and that's what it is, but also understand we are trying to deal with it. We, we have a great group. When, when I look at the task force, we'll kind of talk a little bit about that. But already over 160 individuals in one way or another are part of that task force. And easily the vast amount of them of, of close to 100, I would say, all basically submitted one thing. Tell me how I can help. Not, I, you know, I got to be here. I got to be there. I got to, no, it was no, please tell me how I can help you. Or even to, I should say not or, but to in addition to that, I have got now up to seven of our let's say, larger businesses in the Triple Valley area who have said, Dave, here's my staff. You pick which ones you need on any given day, and we're going to come help you. So again, when I look at that, that reassures me when we're in the in the thick of this thing, we're going to get to the other side because everybody wants to make sure we get there and they're going to do what we can. I think I'm really, really um, excited that the whole community is. You're looking every day, some simple things like uh, um, the Line of Cuckoo's Brewery saying for hospital workers and some complex things like uh, um, um, the chaplain saying that they're going to give help yep. to uh, um, if, for people in need that are working at the HSHS and yep. others on it. Um, I, every time you turn around, there's somebody out there saying, what can I do to help? Yep. On it, what what can we do to make it easy? Exactly. You know, and even uh, last week, or I think right the day after the announcement was made, my, my wife is the director at the Ellie Phillips Senior Center here in Eau Claire, and they had a board meeting. And as a group, they made first thing they dealt with was that and said, we're going to offer a one-year membership to any HSHS employee or purveyor. To again, at least you need some place to come and just work out whatever, but we want to be here for you. So, you know, Jerry, I would echo that. It's great to see that. Okay. So, it, as we look at the task force, and, and, and lots of people have called, and again, it's really detailed on our website. But as we did this, we looked at, at two pieces. One, of course, again, which is different to this, is what we're going to call people. And, and, and Bill was very clear with me and helped me understand rightfully so, that we need to focus. It's all about people, every piece. And and so, again, we're, our, one of our, our subcommittees under the, what we'll call the hospital side or the medical side is, again, what do we do for those patients who are trying to, by the end of April, need new blood pressure medicine? Or the other gentleman I met at the senior center who had a port put in for chemo, where do I go? How do we help those individuals? So we already have a good group there. But again, if that's something you feel you can help, please go to the website. Let us know your name and contact. We'll add you. But we, you know, that's going to be a huge piece because, again, it's, you have such a gamut in there. And I'm always trying to use my hands. I forget I'm on radio. Uh, and, you know, but then the next one is about we still have the 1,400 employees. You know, we have these people by April, or if not now, are already laid off. And, you know, they certainly need to look out for themselves and be able to do that. But what does, I guess, a concern of mine is the potential to lose all of these healthcare people. You know, we're drawing people in, so what do we do is that in a timely manner to try and help them best make their decision? But then again, we have the issues of, current employers with employees. What do they do? So all of these groups will be focused on real specific, what I refer to as goal-oriented tasks. So again, we don't maybe get caught in minutia. We don't get caught in certain things. But we, you know, today we, this is the goal and we move to the next and the next. And so as you two see that, what, what thoughts can you share with well, folks? One of the big ones that's right in there is people who have insurance especially insurance that says you must go to this place or that Correct. place. Um, that's going to be a challenge we've got to get on and come to grips with very rapidly Yeah. because they suddenly will have nothing, and we've got to fix that. Yeah. I think um, I'm really concerned that we can find opportunities for those 1,400. Um, they are some of the 
cream of the crop in the Chippewa Valley, and we yes. want them to find avenues to stay here uh, and work and uh, enjoy, like we all do, the um, Chippewa Valley. Uh, I do feel comfortable that um, um, there's going to be avenues, and it might be the things where five people go to this place, another five this one, and there's a hundred of those five places on it. Right. Uh, um, um, as Bill originally said, uh, we're the concept that um, um, we're looking at it that um, we need to find different avenues. They're not all going into one place on right. it again. Right. And, and again, I think, you know, as I run into a few people who were at Unirua when, you know, when it closed, uh, you know, one of the gentlemen told me, he said, you know, I was close enough where I, I could get some smaller part-time jobs to get in retirement and I'm still here. And he said, but you know, when it happened, I, he said, you know, we had that punch in the gut that, okay, now what, we're going to be in a dying community. And he said to watch the community rally around those employees, the businesses, the families. Again, when you layer this out, he said, I, I just... I threw away the notion that I was going to leave. And he goes, I wanted to see what would happen. So again, you know, Bill, to your point is, is we're going to get through this. We're, we're going to help everybody. But before he walked away, I asked him a question. I said, okay, you were here economically. What did the city look like when Unirail closed compared to what it looks like today? And how do you see our chances? Without batting an eye, he said, you have a 100% better chance of living this thing out today than we ever did with Uniroyal. We never thought it was happening. He said, today it's going to because we as a community focus on a community and not one sector. So, again, it's, it, it, I'm not trying to downplay anything, but we do have to look that there is good things going to come. We just have to make we, sure we focus on those things and, again, not get caught up in other things that are not going to change where we're headed today. So, um, a, again, I want to let all of our listeners know um, I, I have learned extremely well from the next lovely voice that's going to talk to you that not everybody consumes information the same way today. So please understand between this podcast, e-newsletters, communications, we are going to do our best to make sure we're sharing information in every content format that we possibly can. Th gentlemen, thank you both very much. On behalf of the Chamber, thank you for taking on this huge leadership role. And uh, Chelsea, I will turn it back to you. Thanks, Dave. And thank you to everybody tuning in today. Just want to remind everybody that if you want to learn more or how to get involved with the HSHS Purveyor Task Force, to go to our chamber website and right there on the landing page is a tab. Click on that and it will showcase the newsletter, the committees, and the frequently asked questions. We will continue to do these podcast episodes as frequently as need be to provide you all with accurate and timely information. But until then, thank you to our media sponsor, Royal Credit Union, and we will catch you all in the next one.